Okay, <clears throat> here we go. Hey guys, welcome back. So my name's Avery, if you're new. Today I'm just gonna be going over 10 things that I stopped doing for my health. And just a little disclaimer before I start talking about everything I stopped doing. I am not telling you to do these things. These are just what I've done for myself and my body and what I think is best for me at this time right now. I'm open to things changing as well. But this is what I've done so far for my health. Just take this video as inspiration. Don't take this video as things that you should be doing for your health. Everyone is so different and everyone has their own needs. And so, yeah, this is just what I do for me. I hope that this encourages you to also find some things in your life that maybe you should uh, change or stop doing in order to give your body and mind the best life possible. So I'm just gonna go over some things that I've done for my physical and my mental health. The first thing I've done is stopped ignoring my body's signals. So, meaning I'm not ignoring the signals that my body is trying to tell me anymore. Like in the past, if I was, let's say, bloated or constipated or face full of acne, feeling tired, headaches, like these are all things that my body was telling me on a regular basis. Like I'm talking almost every day I would have something I would either have a headache, I would feel really bloated. These are all signals that my body was trying to tell me, hey, something might be wrong. So now I'm much more aware of these things and if I do have a headache, maybe I question, okay, have I drank enough water today? What have I been eating? Is something in my environment triggering that, like with smells? and things like that, like you have to be your own doctor. Like you know your body best and so when things are kind of going wrong and there's like some flare ups of things or let's say I had like a huge acne breakout, like that's your body telling you something and you have to figure out what it's trying to tell you. And so it might be different for everybody. Like for instance, if I eat some dairy, I'll probably have some acne. If I'm eating a bunch of grains or a bunch of uh, cheese, like my bowel movements will be off. And these are all things that your body is trying to tell you. Yeah, I stopped ignoring my body's signals. Okay, my second thing that I stopped doing, I stopped having an inconsistent sleep schedule. So in the past, I didn't really pay much attention to when I was going to sleep. It was very much like YOLO, I'ma stay up till 2, 3 a.m. every night and wake up at 6.30 for work. <laughs> And that was just really not sustainable. Like I was really suffering from that and just having an inconsistent schedule. My circadian rhythm was messed up. If my sleeping is off, everything is off. I really have it down pat to where I'm not really staying up late. I wake up at the same time every day and that's really helped me in so many different aspects of my life. Just having a routine in general has been really amazing for me and so just Having more consistent sleeping schedule has been really good for me. Okay, number three. I have basically stopped drinking. <laughs> and I say this, I say it like that because I haven't completely stopped drinking. Like I definitely will have a drink if I'm with some friends or at a social event, which you know is very rare these days. But if that were to happen, I'll have a drink. But I'm not having like, a dirty Shirley anymore. <laughs> I'm not having anything with any kind of like grenadine or added sugar. I'm having things that are pretty clean, like just tequila, club soda, and lime, skinny margarita, um, gin and club soda. I'm limiting my sugar intake. If I were to have a drink, it would be something like that. Overall, like I'm not getting drunk every weekend. I'm not getting drunk three times a week or I'm not drinking every day. And that's something that I was doing, especially in college and my early 20s. I was definitely binge drinking and drinking way more than I should, drinking over my limit. Like I was trying to cope with different things in my life. Drinking helped with that at the time, but actually, you know, in the long run, it didn't really help me at all. So, so yeah, I've just really limited it to, honestly, maybe, maybe once a month, maybe once every couple months, like it's very limited and it's only, if I'm really being like social with people. Don't really drink on my own anymore. For myself personally, like I know how some people, it just really helps them to have a glass of wine at night and things like that. And I think that's totally fine for you if you can control it and keep it in moderation. And if it makes you happy, 
100% go for it. I was just doing it in a negative way. More often than not, I just had to cut it out. And so I really only do it and I don't really crave it anymore. Like I don't really want to do it. Okay, so that was my third thing. My fourth, my fourth thing is I stopped eating fast food. Okay, so I don't eat any fast food at all. I mean, if I'm on the road or somewhere and I can't go to like a grocery store, Maybe I'll go to a Chipotle, but that's really the only place that I would consider going to get something. And this is for a lot of different reasons. You don't know what oils they're cooking with. You don't know where they get their produce. You don't know where they get their meat. Like there's just so many questions I have about fast food, like the ethical standards and things like that about food in general. I don't think their, their quality isn't to, to the quality that I want to put in my body anymore. And especially with the oils that they cook with, like they're probably not cooking with organic olive oil or organic avocado oil. They're probably cooking with vegetable oils that personally I don't like putting into my body. I would just rather meal prep, cook a lot of extra food, have something that I know will be fast and easy and healthy. So I just always have those things kind of in my head. What I would eat if I were in that kind of time crunch. But yeah, I don't eat fast food anymore. And if you know me, I used to go to town on some Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, what is Zaxby's, loved Zaxby's. I even loved uh, Crystal, loved Crystal. Hate it now, I won't eat it, but I used to love it. Okay, I think this is number five. So this is gonna sound kind of weird. Again, this is just me personally, you don't have to do this, but I stopped drinking ice cold water all the time. I would literally have to have ice cold water. Like if I was drinking water and it wasn't ice cold, Forget it, you know? When I went to like Europe and they would serve water just like this, they would just give me water like this, and I'm like, can I please have some ice? I'm not like that anymore. <laughs> I mainly just drink room temperature water. I mean, it's not like I'm not gonna have any ice ever. Like, I'll definitely have some ice cold water if I feel like it, if it's really hot, or I'll have some sparkling water that's been in the fridge. Like, it's not like I don't ever drink cold water. I would say, 80% of the time I'm drinking room temperature water and that's just for me It really has helped my digestion. I've seen a huge difference in my digestion. It's nice. Okay, this is number six I think okay. I stopped eating the same thing every single day. So let me explain. I Eat, I do eat some things every single day. Like I'm definitely gonna have spinach every day. I probably will have arugula every day. I may or may not have some sort of like onion or tomato every single day. But as a whole, I'm not having the same meal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. It's because I've done a lot of reading and listen to a lot of podcasts about food diversity and how great it is for your body to get a diverse range of food. You need all those different vitamins and minerals and they're not gonna come to you if you eat eggs every single morning and a bologna sandwich for lunch. Shout out to my childhood days when I would eat bologna sandwiches. If you can, I would say mix it up. Experiment with new foods. It's a lot of fun. When I go to the farmer's market, I try to get something new. If something like looks interesting or intriguing, I'll try it, see if I like it. Like I'm always experimenting with new things, getting a diverse range of vitamins and minerals. It's really good for your gut microbiome and just your body in general. We used to eat so many different ranges of food. There's like over 7,000 varieties of apples. 7,000, this is just an example. There's over 7,000 varieties of apples and you go to the grocery store and you see maybe four. You know, so I really try to get new things, experiment with different kinds of grapes, experiment with different kinds of tomatoes, like all those things have different vitamins and minerals. All right, I think this is number seven. All right, number seven. I stopped not reading labels. Okay, so let me explain. I used to just go to the store. I'm a sucker for product packaging. I would see a pretty picture of this waffle and a cool like design on it and I would just get it. And you know, it would say something like gluten-free on the, on the front, gluten-free. Okay, cool. Little did I know it had like 35 ingredients and you don't need all those ingredients. Like you don't need any kind of added sugars, gums. For me personally, I have to be reading the ingredient labels on everything. If it's packaged, if it's something that's been processed or like packaged goods like chips or something or, or waffles or whatever it may be. If, if it's something that has a label on it, I'm gonna be reading it. 
and that's just because I have a lot of food allergies, intolerances, things like that, different sensitivities. So I have to be very strict on myself for that. If you don't need to do that because you wanna have food freedom, more power to you, but I would really suggest you doing some more research and getting to know like what's in the food that you're putting in your body. And you're not gonna need to do that if you're buying like whole foods or an apple. It just has one ingredient. But if you're buying chips, it may have like 50 ingredients. I'm just kind of more aware of that now. And so I'm the annoying lady in the grocery store, flipping everything, looking at all the ingredients. And yeah, and I personally have to do that. If you don't have to do that, then don't do it. But I have to do that. Number eight, I stopped drinking soda. Okay, if you grew up with me, if you're in my family, you know that I love me some Sprite. I used to drink Sprite all the time when I was younger, all the time. Going out to eat, give me a Sprite. Coming home from school, give me some Sprite. Now, granted, my parents did not keep any kind of soda in the house. I would always try to get some Sprite somehow. I stopped drinking soda because it has a lot of sugar in it, it has a lot of calories, and it has corn syrup in it. And corn syrup is linked to so many different things. I would really encourage you to do some research on corn syrup if you're drinking um, soda every single day. But yeah, it just doesn't really work well for me and my body. If I wanna have something that's not water, I'll have the sparkling water, lemon water, and try to jazz it up that way. Number nine. I stopped eating factory farm meat. Okay. I love it here, I love it in the city. So meat is a topic that I don't usually talk too much about because there's just so much controversy around it. I'm gonna give you a little bit about my insight on meat and things like that. So I don't eat factory farm meat just because of a lot of different reasons, but they're usually kept in a very unsanitary way. The animals are mistreated and they're being fed a diet that can be literally anything, literally anything. And being someone who is allergic to grains and corn and things like that, I have to be very careful. If I am eating meat, I would like to know what they've been eating as well. That's really hard to do, honestly. Like I don't see the farms that I'm buying the meat from. Like I'm just having to trust the company, believe that the company has ethical standards and training the animals correctly and feeding them correctly and not giving them any extra hormones or antibiotics and things like that. So when I am buying meat, I will buy it from a local farmer at the farmer's market and ask them a bunch of questions just to get a better understanding of how the animal is kept and what they've been eating. Or if I go and I buy something at the store, like let's say I'm buying beef, I will want it to say 100% grass fed and grass finished. Even the ones that say grass fed, it really has to say 100% grass fed. The stuff that says like natural, whatever, that don't mean shit, okay? That don't mean shit. You want it to be organic, you want it to be 100% grass fed, you want it to be pasture raised is another one. And I can do a whole nother video if you want just about how to buy like high quality meat, companies that I really like and things like that. But honestly, the best way to do it is just to find a local farmer, ask them a bunch of questions, make sure there's no antibiotics, added hormones, they're treating the animals well. There's just so many things that go into buying meat that I'm very particular with. like. I'm not going out to eat and ordering meat without asking a bunch of questions about the meat first. Like I wanna know where they get it, what company, if it's organic, things like that. Like I'm very annoying when I go out to eat and I'm ordering meat. So the last thing I wanna talk about is more towards my mental health. I have really tried over the past year, year and a half to stop stressing over things that are beyond my control. And this has been the hardest thing that I have had to do for my mental health because I stress over everything. It's really difficult to control because let's say a conflict comes up or something unpredictable happens. I like spiral and I will constantly think about the negative things and like, oh my gosh, this is happening. Oh my gosh, I have to do this. Oh, oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. And I just kind of spiral. It's something that I've really been working on is kind of stepping outside of myself, viewing things in a different lens, in a different perspective, reminding myself what my more morals are, what I believe in, how to keep showing up as the best version of myself. And it's been really hard. Trying not to stress over things is basically impossible to do, but if they are things that are beyond my control, I'm gonna really try not to stress over them.
I only stress over things that I can't control, which, you know, I'm a control freak, so it's a lot. If there's something happening in work and I'm like waiting on someone to send me an email or I'm waiting on blah, 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 to, to tell me to do this, or if my boyfriend is dealing with issues with his work, that's beyond my control. And I'm stepping back and I'm acknowledging that and I'm, just focusing on things that I can control. I can control the way I'm breathing. I can control my thoughts. I can control the space that I'm in. I can control how I react to certain things, what words I'm saying, things like that. So I really try to focus on that more than just letting myself spiral and go down a different route. And it's not easy and I'm not perfect at it, but it's something that I've been working on. And it's honestly, been the biggest changer in my mental health this past year and a half. Yeah, I would definitely encourage you to, if you are in a stressful situation, to just kind of take a step back. Remember your goals and remember how you want to show up as a person and show up as that as often as you can and just remind yourself of who you want to be. <sighs> Okay, so yeah, that was 10 things that I've stopped doing for my help. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching and listening. Thank you so much for being here. And yeah, if you have anything else that you'd like me to talk about, leave it in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It means so much to me. And thank you so much. Bye.